Hello, my friends. Welcome back. I'm JC, and this is Grace Overflowing. Today, I have a dream and some confirmations I want to share with you guys. This dream is um, a little older. It's from October the 23rd, and because of that, I would like to read it to you as opposed to recollecting, as I believe by reading it, um, you know, you're going to see a more true vision of what it was that I had dreamed that night. What I want to tell you before I start to read um, my notes from this dream is that I had had two dreams the same night about flash flood events. The second dream was not a continuation of the first dream as has been common with me. They were two totally different dreams. But in the second dream, I already had an understanding from the very beginning of this dream that it was related to a flood from the first dream, if that makes sense. So as I'm reading, that might help you know kind of where I'm coming from because I talk about some of these things before I actually say them. So with that said, um, this is what I wrote. I was in a house on top of a high hill talking to my father, asking if we were really going to stay there. He said yes. The implication was that the house was new and was in a flood zone, and I wondered if we had flood insurance. Then I asked him why the house wasn't built on stilts. I don't recall an answer, but I looked outside for any signs of danger. That's when I saw a nice sized river at the base of this mountain or hill that was very steep, probably at least 75 feet away. And on the opposite side was another hill so that the water came through what appeared to be a valley. It was a beautiful sunny day. The water looked calm, far off, and completely unthreatening. And I wondered how much rain would have to fall for it to reach this house we were in. I went outside and decided to explore a bit, going down this hill toward the water. Then, when I was about halfway to the water from the house, I saw what looked like a huge wave of water come in from the right side, and then I saw another huge wave come into the scene from the other side, and that's when I panicked, realizing that the water was coming in extremely fast. When I turned around, this mountain was even more steep than I perceived it to be, and water gushed in behind me. I finally made it back up to the house, and it was dusk. Time had passed very quickly. The door was locked. The lights were on with a warm golden glow radiating from the home. I rang the doorbell and quickly, my father, and I have a parenthesis that says dark hair, definitely not my earthly father, he opened the door just as the water was rushing up on the doorstep. He opened and I ran in, finally feeling safe. As I ran into his arms, I said, they literally just opened the floodgates and I woke up. So as you can tell, um, this dream has some similarities to some other dreams that I've shared and actually uh, similarities to others that I've had. Off the top of my head, I can think of at least two other dreams that I've had since summer about gushing water, rushing water coming out of nowhere. And I definitely believe that the Lord has been speaking to me for a long time that this is symbolic and it tells how things are going to happen, that things are going to start happening and when they happen, are gonna happen very quickly. That they are going to be very shocking and are going to advance with lightning speed. Now, with all that said, let me talk through some elements of this dream. Obviously, the father had dark hair. I perceived myself to be younger in my dream than I was, even though it was me. Um, and I believe this shows the relationship that I have with God. I think the father symbolized God the father and the safety of this home that I had with him. I had asked him, if we were going to stay, and he said yes. In my dream, I didn't know why. Why would we buy a house? Because it seemed to be new. Why would we buy a house in a floodplain? Why would we do that? But he told me that we would stay there, and I think that this part of the dream just points to the times and seasons we're in. That if you are living on earth, you are in a floodplain. You know, there is an enemy, he is real, and, you know, there are situations and circumstances, you know, especially as we advance toward the ends of the age, 
that are going to be coming up upon the entire world, including the body of Christ. Now, I believe, as I've told you, we will be raptured. But what I think that this part of the dream says is that whatever this flash flood event that, you know, was in this dream, I believe that the yes spoke to that. Whatever that situation is, I believe that the church will be here for and will experience that and needs to be prepared for that. So, um, going on, I knew we were in a floodplain. I wondered about flood insurance and why the house wasn't built on stilts. Now, Spiritually, like I said, we all live in a floodplain, but our safety is in the Father. You know, if you have built your house, your spiritual house on the rock, who is Jesus Christ, it does not matter what comes upon you or I, because we will be covered in the ark of his safety, no matter what comes upon this earth. Now, there were two waves. I don't know what both waves indicate or if they indicate something different. But one came in from one side, the other came in from the other. But I will tell you that I believe strongly in my spirit that one of these waves indicate the election, some aspect to do with the election. And I'll tell you why. Just as the Lord had started to pour all of this into my spirit, shake me up on it, remind me of it, and you know, bring this very pressing feeling that this is a now message and that this is where we are. I'd been getting myself ready that morning, just in conversation with the Lord. And um, I came out and my husband happened to be in the bedroom and happened to be on Facebook and was reading an article that one of his friends had posted related to the election. Now, it's interesting, number one, that he was on Facebook, doesn't do it a lot. And it's interesting, number two, that he was reading anything to do with the election because we both try to stay away from fake news. And, you know, we're really trying to seek God on this, not the words and uh, a lot of times deceit, full lies as it relates of man. So we have just been kind of avoiding that whole thing. But for whatever reason, this article um, caught his eye and he was reading it. I walk out and um, before I had actually left the bathroom, I had asked the Lord, I said, okay, Lord, give me a wave, you know, as the sign of confirmation. I said, give it in a way that only you can, you know, speak to me, let me know, validate this, if this is what you want me to speak, so that I can know that it's from you and um, it's the time and this is the message. So what was interesting is that my husband continued to read me this article and it was related to something that apparently Rudy Giuliani had said in one of his YouTube um, updates about how something was going to happen that would be shocking. And he went on to say, this, this author of this article, and I, again, I'm just, this is fully just recollection. Um, I'm not trying to quote him directly, but I'm just giving you this picture of how this confirmation came through, how this wave came through. Um, I will link that article in the description box in case you're interested in seeing it. But what it had said was that something big was happening and that their strategy was not to a drip, 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 drip kind of mode. That it's going to come out all at once and it was going to be shocking and it was going to be big. And it was interesting because I think one of the lines was even saying like, you know, you almost have to read in between the lines. Like you have to add two plus two together. And so when I heard that, you guys, I just felt like I had just asked for a wave and the opposite of a drip, drip, drip situation, um, as he was implying, and the reality of something big coming out of nowhere was a wave, a, a tsunami, a flash flood of revelation, a flash flood of information, something that they may be holding back. And we are not getting a glimpse of that just yet. But the article um, seemed to imply that this, this author believed that they're sitting on some things. So with that said, I believe that's one of the confirmations he's given me. And I believe that the confirmation also speaks to the election, that one of these waves at least is somehow related to the election. And I've told you what I believe is going to happen with this election, that whatever it appears right now will be changed, will be overturned. It will not happen 
as a lot of people believe that it will. Now, to continue with the dream, I ran into the Father's arms. You know, that symbolizes our absolute need to abide in Him and the fact that we are safe when we are inside of our secret place, when we are in the shadow of the shelter of His wings. And um, I had spoken on that in one of my last videos. And, you know, the, the fact is, I just remember as soon as I got to this home and I ran into that warm light and as soon as he closed that door and I ran into his arms and it's like they literally just opened the floodgates I knew that I was safe that that water could not advance past that door speaking of door it was locked I had to wait I couldn't just bust my way through which was interesting until the Lord revealed to me the lock, why it was there, what it symbolizes. And my friends, that symbolizes the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the door. In John 10 and 9, he says of himself, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Now, in order to be let in, I had to accept Jesus Christ, which I was allowed in. The Father welcomed me into that shelter, into that safe haven that is Him. But in order to get in there, you know, I had to unlock the door first. And the way we unlock the door for ourselves spiritually is by accepting the salvation that can only come through Jesus Christ. Now, I know that the majority of you guys out there, um, you know, my... My heart is to uplift and encourage the body of Christ, but if any of you are watching and you have not yet given your heart to, to Jesus Christ, let me encourage you to do so today. It is the best thing I've ever done. I could not tell you how wonderful life is with Christ. All you have to do in order to do that is to surrender yourself and acknowledge that you are in need of a Savior asking him, you know, into your heart, into your life, believing that he was the son of God, that he was born onto this earth as a tiny little baby, and he lived on earth, a perfect man, and he died to save us all from our sins. If you can believe that in your heart, if you can confess that with your mouth, that is the first step. That's all you need to do, which is really incredible. Um, and the power comes from Jesus and what he did and how he saved us from ourselves. So if you can do that, and if you do do that, you know, then I praise the Lord that you are now a member of his family. You are a part of the kingdom of God. And if that is the case, then trust and rest that no matter what this world brings at you, you know, if you are walking side by side with Christ, your savior, if you are leaning on him and his power, you know, the door will always be open to you. You will always find safety in the shelter of the Most High God, God Almighty. Now, I want to talk through these other confirmations that I had received that were very significant. I was led to look up 1023 because that was the day that I had gotten the dream, October the 23rd. And what I found, you guys, just blew me away. And it spoke volumes about what this message means beyond what is so obviously here, more than what I've just spoken. And confirmed also that this message was from God, that this dream was from God. Now, 1023 in Strong's Concordance, you know, these words, these um, Hebrew and Greek, they're numbered. Um, number 1023 in the, the Hebrew, it says a place in Palestine, a place that was far off, possibly proper name of a location, a house or a settlement on the bank of the Kidron. Now, what's interesting about that is that I looked this place up, this Valley of Kidron, and forgive me if I'm saying it wrong, but what it is, is it's very deserty looking, so it looked different than that in my dream. It was very lush in my dream, very green in my dream, very America looking in my dream, whereas you know, this, this Kidron Valley looks very um, much like you would expect, kind of in almost like that desert scene, um, Israel, Palestine. But what was so significant 
was that you've got these homes basically on one side of the mountain and you have a valley and you have a body of water that flows right in between it. And when I saw that, I was completely astonished at the similarities. Um, even though the Kidron homes, they were built in kind of to the side, in this dream, this home was on the very, very top of the mountain. But I think that has more significance to do with um, the Lord himself. You know, he is the mountain and he is that highest point that we can get to and we can experience it on earth when he lives inside of us and we find shelter um, in his presence. So that got my attention in a big way. I'm like, okay, Lord, like I'm with you. Like of all days you gave me that dream, it was this day. So let's see what else you've got. And then I looked the number 1023 up in the Greek and it blew me away. It points to arm, the arm, and it is a symbol of strength just as in the Bible so, so, so many times. Um, the Lord's strength and his action is by his, his hand and his arm points to his strength. And so I um, just took some time to look at all the Bible verses that show the arm of God, the arm of God, the arm of God. And what was interesting is there were so many, I had a hard time deciding, what am I gonna share today? Because there's a significant message here. Because the message is, whatever is coming, these tsunamis, these waves that are gonna be coming in fast, unexpected, out of the blue, they are intended to show the glory of God. That water is being swiped in by the powerful arm, by the strength of God. And so with that, as I'm going through these uh, Bible verses, I'm reading them and I'm like, okay, well that kind of shows who, and that kind of shows what, and this kind of shows when, and then all of a sudden the five W's came to my mind. Um, you know, the who, what, when, where, why, and some people add a six in, which is actually the how. And before you know it, I had kind of pieced together what I thought was just an incredible word that the Lord was trying to give me, assurance that he was trying to speak to me. And I'm going to try to read through these quickly and just give you the short little revelation that the Lord has given me with each one of these verses and show you how when it is all pieced together, you know, what we have at the end is God in his full glory. So, um, as I said, the five W's are used in information gathering and problem solving. So with that, the first one I'm going to address is who. And um, obviously the who is the Lord. And the verse that the Lord revealed to me and brought me to was Isaiah 40:10, which says, behold, the Lord God will come with might, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Now, recompense in this usage means that whoever has suffered, whoever has been treated badly, the Lord will repay them according to their deeds, which I think is very significant. But the Lord is coming with his might, with his arm ruling for him. So we see this picture of the Lord in this notion of the arm and who the arm is. The next is what, and I'll start with the Psalm 44, three, and this is the verse. For not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm save them, but your right hand and your arm and the light of your face, for you delighted in them. So what the what is, is by his power and salvation, he delivers those who are his. That is what the arm does. He delivers those who are his. Okay, so moving on to the when, and I have Exodus 15, verse 16 for this one. And this verse reads, terror and dread fall upon them. By the greatness of your arm, they are as motionless as stone until your people pass over, O Lord, until the people pass over whom you have purchased. 
So the win in this situation as it relates to the arm of God and when it moves is just when it appears that deliverance is a total impossibility. So in this verse, it says, until your people pass over. Well, there was a Red Sea in front of them. They had a situation that they could not solve on their own. And that is when, you know, the people had to walk through that. The people had to have faith. They had to advance. They had to move through. And that is when the mighty hand of the Lord worked for them, not only parting the sea, but also rescuing them from the enemy as the waves crashed back down upon them after they had made it through the other side. Now, the next concepts um, are where, and I had to list two because there's no doubt there is um, a physical where, and there's also a spiritual where. So I'm first going to give you the verse that I think speaks to the physical where as it relates to the arm of God. This is the verse. It's Exodus 6, 6 that says, Say therefore to the sons of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will deliver you from their bondage. I will also redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. So in this case, the physical where is the presence of the enemy, you know, enemy territory. When he rescues us out of the enemy territory and his plans to kill, steal, and destroy us. As for the spiritual where, um, there is Deuteronomy 33, 27 that says, The eternal God is your dwelling place, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he thrust out the enemy before you and said, Destroy. So when we are in that spiritual safe haven, you know, in our secret place, when we're abiding in God, you know, that's when he does what only he can do. He saves us from our circumstances. There isn't an enemy that can come against us when we are safe, abiding in the presence of our Lord. Now, the why. He gave me Isaiah 52, 10, which says, The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all nations, that all the ends of the earth may see the salvation of our God. And so that is very clear and so awesome. And I think that's what we need to remember that no matter what comes upon us, even if in some ways uh, it looks scary and you're, you know, you're uncertain of the outcome and how things are going to go, remember that not only is God behind it, but he is doing it so that people will know that he is God. And that is what I listed as the why, so that everyone will see and know that he is God. When he works in impossible situations, that's exactly why he's doing what he's doing. It goes so much deeper than whatever the physical aspect is at hand. God has spiritual plans for us and non-believers alike. And a lot of times when he gives us experiences in these places, that when we cannot deny his presence, you know, he is able to open eyes and transform hearts and win souls which is so awesome. Okay, um, lastly, I did do the how, just because I thought that it was so incredible and needed to be spoken. He gave me Deuteronomy 7, 19, and it says, The great trials that your eyes saw, the signs, the wonders, the mighty hand, and the outstretched arm, by which the Lord your God brought you out, so will the Lord your God do to all the peoples of whom you are afraid. Now, what does that say? It says, how? By an incredible display of miracles that can only arise from trials and tribulations, otherwise known as impossible situations. Glory to God, you guys. He is mighty and there is nothing that he cannot do. And I praise him for that. Now, I want to quickly read through all that I wrote, not including the Bible verses, just to give you a picture of where we are because the Lord spoke to me through it and I hope that it speaks to you. Now, this is kind of piecing all the who, the what, the when, the where, blah, 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 blah. So, um, the Lord, 
by his power and his salvation, delivers those who are his. Just as it appears that deliverance is a total impossibility, he rescues us out of enemy territory and from his plans to kill, steal, and destroy us. As we abide in him and cast all our hope on him, so that everyone will see and know that he alone is God. By an incredible display of miracles that only arise from trials and tribulations, otherwise known as impossible situations. Friends, I hope this encourages you today because the truth is that impossible situations are divine invitations to experience God. I truly believe that as the body of Christ, we are set up to experience God in an amazing way in these next coming weeks and months. And I want to remind you that as we advance, as we go through this time, as we wait, what can we be doing? Well, I believe the most important thing we can do is remember Remember all that he's done. You know, remember, like I said, all of that Old Testament. You know, remember your testimony. You know, what has he done in your life? How has he delivered you from these, you know, impossible situations? Because the truth of the matter is, is that is how giants get slain. The difference between David and every other warrior that could have walked out there and taken down that giant was that David remembered he remembered. He told Saul, he said, the same Lord that delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear is going to deliver me from the hand of this giant. Then he walked right up to that giant and he started talking all kinds of glory. Not only did he tell him that he was going down, but it wasn't his power who was going to take him down. He told him that it was the Lord God the outstretched arm of the Lord God that was going to deliver him. And you know what, friends? That's exactly what happened. And incredibly, the Lord did so with the enemy's own sword. He turned the enemy's sword against itself. And when he swung, salvation was known, justice was known, and the fact that he is the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, David's God was real and David's God was powerful because there is no way, no way that man can kill a giant with a slingshot. But with God, all things are possible. Friends, I hope this encouraged you today and I appreciate you so much for watching. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments and I appreciate those who are sending me emails. Um, just be patient with me with the holiday and actually I haven't felt great. Um, the last couple of days I've been a little bit delayed in responding, but I totally will. I love hearing from you guys. Now I do wanna leave you with one more Bible verse that shows the glory of the Lord's arm and it points to what we should do during these times, and it is linked to other videos that I've done um, related to times such as these, I encourage you to go to your Bible right now, if you're able, and, and read the entire thing because it speaks so much about the times we're in, you guys, so much. But let me just read this first verse of Psalm 98, which says, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. My friends, until next time, may the Lord bless you and guide you and fill you with his perfect grace overflowing.